بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم لا حول ولا قوة إلا بالله الذي العظيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله على سيدنا ونبينا أبي القاسم المصطفى محمد وآله الطيبين الطاهرين لا سيما بقية الله في الأرضين أجل الله تعالى فرجه الشريف اللهم أخرجني من ظلمات الوهم وأكرمني بنور الفهم اللهم افتح علينا أبواب رحمتك وانشر علينا خزائن علومك برحمتك يا أرحم الراحمين First I offer my condolences to Imam Mahdi Ajala Allah Ta'ala Farajahu Sharif and to you for the demise anniversary of Imam Hassan al-Askari alayhi salam and I would like to uh, start with two hadith from Imam Askari alayhi salam and then inshallah we carry on with our study of 40 hadith. One hadith from Imam Askari alayhi salam is, is this. Qulu lannas husnan mu'minihim wa mukhalifihim. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the Quran says Qulu lannas husna. Then some people may think this is only for good people, although nas is general, but some people may think it's only for the people who are good or people who agree with us about our aqidah, etc. But Imam Asker clarifies that this is not limited to the mu'mineen. He says, Qulu lannas husnan mu'minihim wa mukhalifihim. أَمَّا الْمُؤْمِنُونَ فَيَبْسِطُ لَهُمْ وَجْهَهُ When it comes to mu'mineen, you say uh, good things with, you know, very happy and, you know, uh, kind uh, appearance. You smile. You anyway, you make mu'mineen happy and say good things with respect, with honoring. But what about mukhalifin, uh, the people who disagree with us in our aqidah and maybe you know, they don't uh, agree with us but at the same time they even question our iman. Imam says even with them you have to speak in a nice way. وَأَمَّا الْمُخَالِفُونَ فَيُكَلِّمُهُمْ بِالْمُدَارَاتِ لِجْتِذَابِهِمْ إِلَى الْإِيمَانِ You have to speak with them with mudarat, with tolerance, so that you can attract them towards iman. If they disagree and reject and are you know, against you and you are also speaking harshly this is going to become worse and worse you have to be tolerant and you have to be controlling your emotion speak nicely with logic with akhlaq with hikmah and inshallah maybe the distance becomes less so this is one hadith the next hadith again from imam Asker is this we have abrar and fujjar. Abrar means people who are good, who are righteous, who are pious. Fujjar means those who are sinful criminals. So, hubbul abrar lil abrar thawabun lil abrar. If abrar love abrar, Righteous people love righteous people. This is reward for abrar, for righteous people. What if I act, if I am ab if one of abrar, I act in the way that fujar love me. Not only abrar love me, even if sinful people love me. Imam Asker al salam says, حُبُّ الْفُجَّارِ لِلْأَبْرَارِ فَضِيلَةٌ لِلْأَبْرَارِ 
if sinful people, people who are not practicing love pious people, this is a fadila, this is a merit for Abrar that with their akhlaq they have managed to uh, gain the love and appreciation of people even who are weak in their iman, in their akhlaq but because still they have fitra, they love good people but if Fujar dislike Abrar, this is Zainun Lil Abrar, this is a adornment for Abrar, meaning that you have acted with akhlaq, with good you know treatment. Some of the bad people appreciate you, Alhamdulillah. Some of them, in my understanding, this is the meaning of hadith, some of them are so bad that they are not happy with you. Okay, this is not bad for you. But provided that you have behaved in the way that you have managed to attract some of them. Not that you know you have been such a person that is not approachable and you know harsh that all the people who disagree and all the people who don't practice are against you. <laughs> so if there is hubbul fujjar lil abrar fadilatun lil abrar if it is bughul fujjar lil abrar zaynun lil abrar and bughul abrar lil fujjar if righteous people dislike bad people, this is khizyun ala al-fujjar. This is a kind of disgrace for bad people. That good people, honest people, truthful people, trustworthy people, don't trust them, don't like them. They should change, they should wake up. Both hadiths that I have mentioned from Imam Askari salam, teach us that as a mu'min uh, not only we need to uh, love other mu'mineen we need also to reach out to other people and try to attract them if they get closer to good people inshallah if we are good people and they are closer to people who have good aqidah good practice good akhlaq then they get closer to those virtues and they get closer to religion they get closer to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala but if we don't manage to attract them and indeed we you know uh, send them away and push them away then it becomes just worse uh, i pray to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give us that kind of uh, virtuous and uh, pious and at the same time wise behavior that we would be able to help people in their journey towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in their return towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala inshallah okay now we go to the hadith from 40 hadith as you know we finished hadith 31 and now we want to start with hadith 32 this hadith is about Yaqeen and in brackets, hers and reda. Yaqeen means certainty. Hers means greed. Reda means pleasure. So we are going to talk about these things, of course, briefly, because we have already have, uh, you know, talked about these issues. Besanad al Muttasil ila Muhammad ibn Yaqub al Kulaini, according to his own. Uh, ajazat which connects him to Shaykh Kulaini uh, late Imam Khomeini quotes from Shaykh Kulaini from An al Husayn ibn Muhammad An al Mu'alla ibn Muhammad An al Hassan ibn Ali al Washa An Abdullah ibn Sanan An Abi Abdullah alayhi salam from Imam Sadiq alayhi salam Qala min sihhat yaqeen al mar al muslim Allah yurdi al-nas bi Allah uh, 
a requirement and or a sign of certainty of a Muslim is that he or she would not please people by displeasing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If you manage to please people without compromising about your principles, your duties, alhamdulillah, that's very good. Please people, no problem. <laughs> Actually, it's good to please people. But if you are pleasing people with compromising your virtues and principles and duties, that's the problem. Because this means that you are pleasing a special type of people. <laughs> You are pleasing people who are not pleased with akhlaq, with you know respect. You are pleasing people that only when you sin and you you know make mistakes, they will be pleased. So one sign of yaqeen of certainty and you know and you know validity of certainty is that you have really become certain is not to please people by displeasing Allah. Number two, which is a sentence which Imam Khomeini uh, mentions two interpretations for this second sentence. وَلَا يَلُومَهُمْ عَلَى مَا لَمْ يُؤْتِهِ He would not blame people for what? Allah has not given him if of course we will mention later two interpretations but now I just mention one means if I don't have something I shouldn't blame people if Allah hasn't decided to give me something I should not blame my father my mother I don't know my friends my colleagues or my boss my manager sometimes you know unfortunately we just look for people that we can blame but we should not blame if we have yaqeen we should not blame people for what allah has not given us وَلَا يَرُدُّهُ كَرَاهِيَّةُ كَارِهِمْ If something is decided by Allah as your sustenance, as your rizq, neither greed of greedy can bring it, nor dislike of people who dislike would send it back. So whether you are greedy or not, or whether there are people who don't like you receive rizq, it would not have impact if this is your rizq, if Allah has decided this rizq to come to you. وَلَوْ أَنَّا أَحَدَكُمْ فَرَّ مِنْ رِزْقِهِ كَمَا يَفَرُّ مِنَ الْمَوْتِ لَأَدْرَكَهُ رِزْقُهُ If someone runs away from his sustenance as you ref, you know uh, uh, run away and escape from your death how death certainly is going to reach you Ainama takunu yudrakumul maut wherever you are death would come and find you risk is also like that if this is decided it would come and find you if rezq is decided it would come and find you so if one of you f runs away from his rezq as he runs away from his death his rezq would come and find him as his death would find you and come uh, would uh, come and find him then imam ali salam said thumma qala inna allah ba'dalihi wa qistihi جَعَلَ الرَّوْحَ وَالرَّاحَةَ فِي الْيَقِينَ وَالرِّضَى Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with his justice 
adl justice wa qist qist is a kind of justice which is for more for giving equal opportunities and you know social justice allah out of his justice has put rawh wa rah comfort fil yaqin wa rida the comfort of the soul and heart is in yaqin in certainty and rida to be pleased with allah's decision wa ja'ala al ham wa al huzn fi al shakk wa al sakhat and concern and sadness allah has put them in doubt and in sakhat o sukht both of them are mentioned means uh, opposite to rida means to displease allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so if you are muqin if you have yaqin you are pleased with what allah plans for you and decides for you and brings forth for you and you would also have serenity and tranquility not that you don't do anything not that you don't work you don't go for seeking rizq but in the sense that you would not be greedy you would not do haram or you know act immorally in order to gain rizq so this was the text of hadith as normal uh, imam khomeini tries to clarify some terms uh, that have occurred in this hadith for example he says according to sharh jawhari sakhat like faras wa sukht like qufl both of them are used and they are opposite to rida rida means pleasure and sakhat and sukht is opposite to pleasure not to be pleased wa qad sakhata ay ghadiba if someone is unhappy and displeased he can say sakhat fa huwa sakhat then qist means justice and he says they mean the same as i said maybe you can say qist is giving equal opportunities rawh wa raha he says are they are synonymous rawh and rah according to jawhari allama majlisi rahmatullah alayhi says rawh is raha for qalb comfort of the heart and raha is comfort for body so jawhari says rawh and raha are the same allama majlisi says rawh is for heart and raha is for body comfort of the heart and comfort of the body ham wal huzn jawhari says they are the same and allama majlisi says maybe we can say ham is the concern is the worry when something is going to happen and huzn is sadness for something about the past when you have missed something in the past so these are few words that need clarification now the first chapter is about wala yalumuhum ala ma lam yu'tih allah wa wala yalumuhum min sihhat yaqin al mar' al muslim alla yurdi an nas bi sakhat allah wa la yalumuhum ala ma lam yu'tih allah so he says there are two possibilities one is not to blame people if they don't give him because allah has decided if allah has not planned for you this risk don't blame people why they didn't give you this is what 
Mulla Muhsin Faiz Rahmatullah Alayh has mentioned and Allama Majlisi also has supported. Mullah Muhsin Faiz has also another interpretation. And he says he should not blame people for what Allah has given, has not given to them. Don't blame people for what they don't have. If, for example, they are poor, don't blame them. Or if they don't have, you know, I don't know, uh, knowledge or if they don't have good children, whatever, you know, something that Allah has not given them. Not that they, of course, were lazy, etc. But sometimes it was not their hand, in their hand. So the first interpretation is not to blame people for what they have not given to him because Allah didn't want or not to blame people for what they don't have because Allah has not given them. And Imam Khomeini prefers this second one. Uh, and he says that, uh, for example, you know, we have a hadith which says, uh, if people know how God created people, no one would blame another person. It's a beautiful hadith. You know, we should not be judgmental. Not that at all we should not judge. You know, some people think that we should not judge at all. No, there are things which are obvious. But when it comes to personal issues, many times things can be complicated. There are things that, of course, are obvious and there is no excuse. But there are things that there can be excuse and we don't know the situation. We think, you know, this person has not been, for example, I don't know, either working hard or, I don't know, has not been taking care of his family or this and that, but we don't know. Hadith says, if people knew how Allah has created people, means others, all of us, then we would not blame each other. We would not expect too much from each other or expect the same from everyone. Because the blame is that when you have fixed expectations and then you measure everyone with these fixed expectations. You, those of you who are parents or you know you have brothers, sisters, you know that even two children are not the same. Even two siblings are not the same there are differences so there are these two interpretations and he prefers the second one now the next point and this is our last point for today inshallah we want to have a not too long session tonight is how to put together two sets of hadith I'm sure this question has come to s s at least some of you on the one hand we say rizq is divided by God and planned by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is guaranteed whether you are haris, greedy or not, it's not going to change. On the other hand, we have hadith which says, which say, we should seek rizq. We should work. We should, you know, try to earn halal income, halal livelihood. And there is condemnation of people who don't work. For example, even people, if they just, you know, do ibadah and uh, don't do anything, this is not acceptable. So how we can bring these two sets of hadiths into harmony? Uh, he says, these hadiths which say that rizq is distributed by Allah, which also have resonance with some verses of the Quran don't conflict 
with the hadith which say we should work and we should seek rizq we should do talab or rizq and for example one group of people whose du'as whose prayers would not be accepted are people who don't work as a sample he mentions this hadith Shaykh Tusi rahmatullah alayh quotes through his chain of narration from Ali ibn Abdul Aziz قال, قال Abu Abdullah alayhi salam he says Imam Sadiq alayhi salam asked this question ma fa'ala Umar ibn Muslim what has Umar ibn Muslim done he says, I told him, Ju'al tu fidak, aqbala ala la ibadah, wa tarakat tijar. He has focused on ibadah and has abandoned trade and business. He just does ibadah, day and night, doesn't work. Faqala wayha. أَمَا عَلِمَ أَنَّ طَارِكَ الطَّلَبْ لَا يُسْتَجَابُ لَهُ دَعْوَةِ Doesn't he know that someone who doesn't seek rizq, his dua would not be accepted? And then Imam mentioned a story from the life of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. إِنَّ قَوْمًا مِنْ أَصْحَابِ رَسُولِ اللَّهِ sallallahu alayhi wa alihi لَمَّا نَزَلَتْ وَمَنْ يَتَّقِ اللَّهِ يَجْعَلْ لَهُ مَخْرَجًا وَيَرْزُقْهُ مِنْ حَيْثُ لَا يَحْتَسِبْ أَغْلَقُ الْأَبْوَابَ وَأَقْبَلُوا عَلَى الْعِبَادَةِ Imam Sadiq alayhi salam said when this uh, verse from Surah Talaq was revealed that whoever is muttaqi Allah would put for him a way out from problems and gives him from where he doesn't expect. When they heard this, they said, we close the doors of our home, we don't go out. And we do ibadah, then Allah is going to to give us from where we don't expect. <coughs> they said we have been uh, given guarantee that we would have sufficient enough of risk nabi sallallahu alaihi wasallam the news reached the prophet fa'arsala ilayhim rasulullah asked them to come and said ma hamalakum ala ma sanatum what made you decide to do what you did why you stopped trade and business and working faqalu ya rasulullah takaffala allah lana bi arzaqina fa aqbalna ala al ibadah o messenger of god allah has guaranteed to provide us with our rizq he has undertaken to sustain us therefore we turn towards ibadah faqala man fa'ala dhalika lam yustajab lahu rasulullah said whoever does this whoever doesn't do uh, work his dua his ibadah would not be accepted lam yustajab lahu means his dua would not be answered alaykum bi talab you must seek you seek risk So Imam Sadiq with quoting this hadith is saying that you must work and ibadah is not enough. Even ibadah with all the beauty that it has is not enough. So now the question is, so if you have to work, what does it mean that rizq is guaranteed? If rizq is guaranteed, it should come anyway. So, Imam Khomeini says, 
وجه عدم منافات بین اخبار آن است The explanation of harmony and not conflict between these two sets of hadith is this که پس از طلب نیز ارزاق و جمیع امور ده تحت قدرت حق است You have to work and seek rizq but still even after seeking rizq rizq is in the hand of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala So it's not that your seeking rizq independently can give you rizq Rizq is in the hand of Allah but you have responsibility you have a duty to seek But when you seek for rest in a reasonable way, as your duty, still Allah has to give you rest. Allah has plans for you, has measures of rest available for you. You do your part, or you know, as some people may say, you know, you play your game. But risk comes from him. Like for example, you go to doctor, you take the prescription, then you take the medicine, but shefa is coming from him. But you cannot say, I don't want to go to doctor. Or I go to doctor, but I don't take the medicine because he is the one who is shafi. He gives shefa. No. With your misunderstanding, you are causing problem for yourself. Yes, he is Shafi, but you have duty also. His Shifa comes when you act according to his instructions. Not that you bypass his instructions and say, no, give me Shifa. You should put your hope in him, not in medicine or the doctor, but You have to go to doctor, respect doctor, take the medicine, take the advice as a channel, as a way to bring Allah's shifa to you. So, he says, Qiyam bi talab as vaza'if ibadas, one of the duties of the servants is to seek risk. But tartib umur, bringing things together, bringing uh, apparent and hidden causes together, which normally are out of your hand, is according to his plan. So someone who has yaqeen, at the same time that would work, it's not that he doesn't work, he works. He acts according to his duties and responsibilities, but he would not become greedy. He would not become too worried. And he says, I do my job properly. The rest is with him. I don't need to do anything wrong so that I can gain more from him. So you should seek as much as it is expected from someone in your position. And there is no point in blaming people if you have done your work. Then why you are blaming people? Allah wants you to do your work and he is taking care of other aspects for you. Then the next chapter is about some of the signs of yaqeen. Insha'Allah we will talk about this in the next session. We pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to plan for us and help us to work wisely for implementation of his plan. That we would get insha'Allah pleasant rizq with abundance 
and so much that inshallah we can take care of our needs and we can help also other people with Allah. Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen.